This is Jason Spangler with Wagner Meters and today I'd like to talk to you about hydrostatic pressure. It's probably one of the most common uh, misused terms out there. Uh, we've talked about it briefly before but I really wanted to try to find a graphic example of it and I actually was able to track one down. But usually when I get a phone call and somebody's talking about hydrostatic pressure they're talking about the issues with the uh, high levels of moisture or moisture readings that they're getting from a floor and they use the term hydrostatic pressure to mean those issues with the high moisture readings when really in essence what you're looking at in that situation or at least in most situations of that nature is the fact of the, the differential between the moisture and how, how fast it's, it's actually evaporating out of the slab based on what's going on with the ambient conditions. Uh, typically when you look at um, when you look at really hydrostatic pressure, it has to be something. It's not a slab on grade. It has to be below grade. So the best way that I can really show this example is I've taken this water bottle and if I look at a slab on grade, and we'll just say this is on grade, and we'll say that this one down here is below grade. As I take these two pieces of tape off, you'll see and pull the top off of it but you'll actually see how this moisture or this water stream here has more pressure behind it because of the fact that that slab is below the theoretical grade or below the water table. So you're going to have more pressure that comes out as opposed to a slab that's not that deep into the ground or a basement that's not that deep into the ground when it's built. So again, Less pressure, less of a stream. More pressure, more of a stream as it's built deeper down below the water table. Hope that helps. I actually like the uh, demonstration. This is Jason Spangler signing off.